Imagine that you two are in a spacecraft. You accelerate and continue going straight, forever, but hold on. This spacecraft has brakes. This spacecraft can even do a handbrake turn, but you don't want to waste time. Your mission is one, to reach the end of the universe. When you get there, can you tell me what you thought? Because this is one of the greatest mysteries of science. The question of what exists at the end of the universe is ancient. Aristotle, Galileo, Newton, Einstein. Do you know what they have in common? They all tried to understand this invisible frontier. Many failed, others perhaps never truly existed, but the question remained, today, I will try to put an end to this debate once and for all. If Einstein were alive, he would be proud. To set off with your spacecraft towards the end of the universe, we need to consider three scenarios. The first is that the universe is curved, like the surface of the Earth. You would walk forward and, after a long time, return to the starting point. The second is that it is infinite, extending forever, never repeating. And the third is that it has a real limit, a finishing point where space and time simply cease to exist. This last idea is frightening. What could exist beyond space and time? Nothing. Neither particles, nor light, nor laws of physics. Just the end, I prefer this last scenario. But the video would end now, and I would be making a serious methodological error. Trust me, I want to help you explore the limits of the universe. So listen carefully now. This is very important. Why is the sky dark at night? It seems obvious. But have you ever really tried to answer that question? The sun is not shining on us, so we see space. But if the universe is indeed infinite and full of stars, then in any direction you look, at some point you should find a star. This would make the whole sky as bright as the sun. This is the basis of Olber's paradox. It was just one simple question that blew your mind, wasn't it? But hold on, there's more. To understand how this paradox really works, we will have to go back a little in time, more specifically, to the origin of the universe. The universe had a beginning. You certainly already knew that. A moment when everything emerged. Before becoming a famous TV series, the Big Bang already existed. That was 13 to 8 billion years ago. Before that, time and space as we know them did not even exist. In the beginning, everything was concentrated in a tiny and extremely hot point, so hot that even atoms could not exist. There were only loose particles, like quarks, gluons, and an absurd amount of radiation. In the first minutes, these particles began to combine, forming the first elements of the universe, such as hydrogen and helium. This was the first step towards the formation of stars and galaxies. But the most important for our understanding of the paradox comes next. Since the Big Bang, the universe began to expand. And it has never stopped. Every second, the space between galaxies increases. When astronomers pointed their telescopes at distant galaxies, they noticed something strange. The farther away a galaxy is, the faster it moves away from us. This is called a shift. The light from these galaxies stretches with the motion, becoming redder. This effect was predicted by Edwin Hubble, and it is one of the greatest discoveries in astronomy. But what happens when we look at galaxies so far away that they are moving away from us faster than light itself? The light they emit simply cannot reach us, and this creates an invisible barrier. A limit called the Hubble Sphere. It's a kind of bubble around us. Everything inside this bubble can still send us light. Everything outside will never be able to. No matter how much time passes, the light from those regions will never reach here. It's as if we are trapped on a cosmic island, surrounded by an ever-growing sea today. This sphere is about 14 to 4 billion light years in radius. This means that anything beyond that distance is already moving away faster than light can travel. And as the universe continues to expand, this sphere grows every day. But what is truly frightening is that most of the universe is already beyond that reach. If there are galaxies on the other side of the Hubble sphere, they are forever out of our reach. 
Even if we built a ship that moved almost at the speed of light, we still could never get there. It's like those galaxies are falling beyond a cosmic horizon, like objects being pulled into a black hole. But this is not even the tip of the iceberg. With every assing second, thousands of stars cross that boundary. It's about 60,000 stars per second more than 50 million since the beginning of this video. They are disappearing forever. The Hubble sphere works like a timeline. Everything beyond it belongs to the past, unreachable, and the trend is only going to worsen. With the accelerated expansion caused by dark energy, more and more galaxies will be out of our reach. Billions of years from now, the visible universe will be just a point. If some civilization arises in that distant future, they will never know that the universe was once so vast. For them, the cosmos will be just a lonely galaxy, nothing more. And it is for information like this that people stop watching videos about science and astronomy. But fortunately, this changes the way we understand time and space. It changes what we understand as reality. The universe does have an edge, but it is not where space ends. She is where the light can no longer reach us. An invisible boundary. A horizon of events. And the strangest thing about it all is that this bubble is not made of matter or energy. It is made of time, time we will never have time that separates us from the rest of the universe. But the prognosis would be different if, for example, the universe were curved and finite without edges. Like the surface of a sphere, you could travel in a straight line forever and eventually return to the starting point. Without realizing you made a complete loop, there is no top or bottom, just a continuous curvature. In this way, the universe would be closed, limited in size, but without physical end. The idea seems simple, but it changes everything we understand about distances, directions, and limits. Now imagine the opposite. Let's do an exercise in imagination. A universe with negative curvature, like a saddle, this universe can also be infinite, but with one important detail, it does not close in on itself. It spreads in divergent directions. Lines that start parallel drift apart forever. The geometry here is different. A triangle does not sum to 180 degrees. A circle does not obey the rules we learned in school. It is a space where everything tends to spread out and never to meet again. This is not the most positive possibility either. But don't complain to me. We are just theorizing here. There is also the third possibility. The flat universe. A space where everything behaves exactly as we expect. Parallel lines remain parallel. Triangles sum to 180 degrees. And there is no apparent curvature. It is as if we are living on a paper a thousand times larger than anything we can imagine. Within this scenario, the universe can be both finite and infinite. It all depends on the topology. To find out which of these possibilities is real, scientists did something impressive. They opened this video and discovered what you will discover now. This is not necessarily a truth, just like flat Earth. What they really did was measure the geometry of the universe using the cosmic microwave background. A radiation that fills all of space, remnants directly from the Big Bang. A map of the universe when it was only 380,000 years old. What they found was the following. Within our observable universe, space is flat. Extremely flat with a margin of error less than 0.4%. This means that if there is curvature, it is so subtle that we cannot detect it yet. But that does not mean the entire universe is flat. Just that our visible piece behaves this way. It is like looking at the horizon and thinking that the Earth is truly flat because we are only seeing a very small part of it. This is an observational bias. One of the most accepted explanations for this is the hypersphere, a much larger, positively curved structure of which we can only see a piece our universe could be part of this surface. So large that it seems flat, but in reality, it is curved in dimensions we cannot visualize. This curvature would only be detectable if we looked at even more distant regions of the cosmos. Regions that are still beyond our observational capacity. 
But if the universe is truly infinite and flat, then we are dealing with something much stranger. In an infinite space with finite particles and limited combinations, everything repeats. This is basic statistics. If you, if you have enough blocks and unlimited space, you will eventually create repetitions. This means that somewhere in the universe, there could be an exact copy of you. Same clothes, same age, same thoughts. Perhaps watching this video right now. Perhaps liking this video just as you surely just did. Except in this universe, you also subscribe to the channel. This concept is called the infinite universe with repetitions. And it raises questions that go beyond physics. Because if there are infinite copies of everything, then what does it mean to be unique? What is identity? But let's leave those questions for Aristotle to answer. The important thing is to understand that this possibility is real. Based on the current cosmological model, this is an inevitable outcome. But there is one detail that almost nobody notices. Even if the universe is infinite, we are trapped in a finite bubble. The observable universe. The maximum limit of what we can see and study. Everything that lies beyond that is, in practice, inaccessible. Even if there are billions of copies of us scattered around, we will never be able to reach them. Not even with millennia of advanced technology, because the universe is expanding. And this expansion pushes everything away faster and faster. I have already mentioned this right here in this video. The expansion never ends. The result is that we live on a small island of reality, of flat and limited peace, surrounded by an infinite sea of possibilities. In two trillion years, we won't even be able to see other galaxies. Their light will no longer reach us. Everything will have crossed the limit. The universe will become completely dark, not because the light has stopped but because it can no longer find us. Now imagine what this means for knowledge for science. If a civilization arises in that distant future, it will live surrounded only by its own galaxy. For them, the universe will be small, static, eternal. They will never hear about the Big Bang. They will never see a cosmic microwave background. They will never have access to other galaxies. They will believe that the universe has always been this way. It always will be, and they will be completely wrong. And that's why science is amazing, and you should really have the right to speed your ship to the edge of the universe. It's now or never. That's why the moment we live in is so special. For the first time, we can see far enough to understand where we came from. But we cannot get there because, unfortunately, it is just a reflection of our own past. The video is not over yet, and the universe has expanded a little more. 